So if you go back 2,000 years, if you met someone that told you that they were a follower of Jesus, what did you know about them? If you went back 2,000 years. They were a Jew. That they were a Jew. Who said that? She did. Right. Right. <laughs> that they were a Jew. Meaning that today, most people that tell you that they're Christians, right? So you assume they're not Jewish. But 2,000 years ago, if anyone told you that they were a Christian, which means they were a follower of Jesus as the Messiah, you knew one thing about them, that they were Jewish. Right? Some things certainly changed over the past 2,000 years. Right? And what we're going to try to do today is understand how this may have taken place. Now, I want to uh, say at the beginning today that what I'm going to be sharing with you is speculative. This is not something that I don't think we have the ability to know for sure. And you'll see there are certain reasons why the questions we're going to be looking at today are questions we have to speculate about. Because we may have very difficult times getting all the way back to the roots of this story. So we're going to start in the upper left hand corner here with the question, who is Jesus? And basically, there are two primary schools of thought when it comes to this question, who is Jesus? The conventional wisdom among Jews for most of the past 2,000 years was in number one, right? Which is that Jesus was someone who rebelled against Judaism, right? He was someone who rejected Judaism, and he started his own religion, and that religion that he started is called Christianity. And all the things that are part of Christianity come from Jesus, right? He was basically the inspiration and the, the mover and the shaker and the, the driving force behind what has become Christianity over the past 2,000 years. And where do you get this picture of Jesus as someone who rejected Judaism and was a rebel against Judaism? So I have here, number one, the Talmud, right? You could theoretically read the Talmud and find stories about someone that looks like it may be Jesus, and they're talking about him in very negative ways. I mean, they seem to be talking about this Jesus not like he's one of the good guys, right? All the stories seem to be talking about someone who's not really one of our good guys. So you could get the impression from the Talmud that Jesus was a rebel against Judaism, right? Someone that broke away and started his own business. And then also in the Gospels. The Gospels are the four biographies of Jesus in the New Testament. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And many of the stories there talk about Jesus as someone that could stand the rabbis and was constantly fighting with the rabbis and putting them down and knocking them and knocking Judaism, knocking Jewish law. You could certainly get the impression from the Gospels that Jesus was a rebel against Judaism. I'm going to sort of expose my cards at the beginning of the game now and tell you I don't personally believe that. I don't believe that Jesus was someone that rejected Judaism. I don't believe he was someone that was disloyal to Judaism. I don't think that he started Christianity. So the alternative way of looking at the story is, number two, that Jesus was loyal to the Torah. He was someone that was basically a Torah observant Jew. And the break with Judaism begins with someone named Paul. Paul was someone that we're going to see today never met Jesus. Paul never met Jesus. Paul wrote most of the New Testament, at least 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament are written by Paul. And most of the important ideas of Christianity seem to come from Paul. Now, if that's the case, right, if Paul really is the one that gets this religion going in the beginning, so what about the Talmud? Right? What about all these stories in the Talmud about this bad guy named Jesus? So what we have to say is, number one, that these stories in the Talmud are not about Jesus of Nazareth, right? Who might they be about? Who might they be about? Some other Jesus. Some other guy named Jesus, right? We live in a world today where you don't find many Jewish people named Jesus, right? If his name was Yahushua, then maybe it wasn't such an odd name. Maybe there were many people that had his name. Um, and it's quite possible, and I would say it's probable that the stories in the Talmud are not about Jesus of Christianity. Now, why do I say that? So, really, there are many reasons. There would be a whole lecture that I could give 
So I would say there are two major reasons. Number one, that if you take the timing of the stories in the Talmud, the dates are quite far off. Meaning that the Talmud speaks about this Jesus as a student of Rabbi Yeshua ben Prachia. And Yeshua ben Prachia lives about 160 years before the Jesus of Christianity. Other stories in the Talmud speak about someone that lives about 160 years after the Jesus of Christianity. So one problem is just in the dating. The second problem is that all of the details in the stories about Jesus in the Talmud don't jive, they don't square, they don't dovetail with the details of the stories about Jesus in the Christian Bible. So for example, the Christian Bible says that Jesus had how many apostles? How many Talmudim? How many? Twelve. Right? How many? Was it twelve? Twelve, right? And the Talmud says he has five. This is an example, right? So you have details of the Jesus story in the Talmud that don't line up with the details of the Jesus story in the Gospels. So I would say that, at least at the beginning of today, right, the class would be very, very short. If we wanted to know how did Judaism and Christianity part their ways, right? What was the story of that parting their ways? If you start with this first approach, which is that Ju Jesus rebels against Judaism, Jesus throws Judaism out the out the window, he starts his own religion. Now you know the whole story. Jesus is the originator of Christianity, and that's how they started to split. That's how the split began. I'm going to be trying to develop with you today another alternative way of looking at it, where Jesus did not begin the split, it begins later on. Now we're going to go to the top of the page, the top line, when we go to who is Jesus, and we're going to study the story of Jesus together. Right? We know that Jesus had a ministry that lasted for about three years. His career was about a three-year career. And let's say that one of the things that he claimed to be was the Messiah. Let me ask you all a question. Is that something that violates Judaism for a person to think they are the Messiah? Yes. No. It does? Well, you can't tell people that I am a Jew. Well, what if you did? Right? What, what if I was a Jew? What if I was to tell you that I was the Mashiach? I think you're a cult leader. You would think that I was a cult leader. Okay? Or I'll say, okay, it's possible. Just prove it. No, you're not. Right. I'm not with Lisa, not say love. Say um, me. I can walk. What's it's that? Not, uh, I'm not personally. It's possible. Is it a bad thing? I mean, if a person says it, is, is it to be Mashiach is a bad thing? Well, I'm trying to go again. I'm not talking about going against the Torah, right? We know that the Mashiach is going to be a great teacher of the Torah, right? So that, again, if I tell you that I'm a Mashiach, is that a crime against Judaism? It's not trying to go against the Again, why would the Mashiach try to get you to do things against the Torah? Again, the Mashiach is going to be a great teacher of the Torah, right? So I'm not telling you now that I'm going to be a horrible Mashiach. I'm just telling you that I'm the Mashiach. And I haven't taught you anything, by the way. <laughs> That's always a safe answer. Um, listen, if someone came to me and said they were the Mashiach, right, unless they looked like they were totally out of their mind, right, which is always possible, we know that the mental asylums in this country are full of people who think they're the Messiah. Assuming that it's a person that could be theoretically in the ballpark, which means it's someone who, let's say minimally, right, is a religious Jew, that's learned, right, that seems to have some leadership qualities. If the person claims to be the Messiah, on some level, right, a healthy response would be halavai, right? Halavai, which means, you know what, it would be nice. It would be nice. If you turn out to be the Mashiach, it would be very nice. Meaning, I don't know for sure, I suspect you probably are a little bit deluded, uh, <laughs> but it would be nice if it was true. The point I'm trying to make is that the idea of someone being Mashiach is not an unhealthy impulse. Meaning that it's a positive thing to be the Mashiach, right? You're going to be the force, you're going to be the agent to make the world a much better place, right? So for a person to have this impulse, if I'm going to be the one that's going to basically bring this world to its fulfillment and bring this world to where it could be, that's not a bad thing to think. Right? It's not an evil thought, it's actually it's a positive thought. On some level, right, maybe everyone should think that about himself. 
right? I want to be someone who's going to change the world. I want to be someone who's going to make this world a better place, right? I'm not talking about someone claiming it's good, that we're going to be a great cult leader, a great dictator, right? The, the concept itself, to be Mashiach, is not an evil concept. It's a positive concept. So you have someone named Jesus 2,000 years ago who thought he was the Mashiach. Mashiach. That was what he thought about himself. And he persuaded a group of people that followed him that he was the Messiah. 